Hello everyone, I am Sonali Kanaude, Assistant Professor of AIDS Department in AISSMS IOIT Pune. Today we are going to discuss about the uh, software testing principles. So, uh, software testing principles have been suggested over the past 50 years and offer general guidelines common for all testing. These are these uh, seven software testing principles. First of all, uh, first is the testing shows the presence of defects. Then next, second is the exhaustive testing is impossible. Third one is the early testing. Fourth one is the defect clustering. Five, the, uh, fifth is the pesticide paradox. Six is the testing is context dependent. And last one is absence of error fallacy. So uh, first one is the testing shows the presence of defect in this testing. In this testing can show the defects are present but cannot prove that there are no defects. Testing reduces the probability of undiscovered defects remaining in the software but even if uh, no defects are found, testing is not a proof of correctness. So uh, these are the testing um, shows, the, shows the presence of defects not their absence is a major First one is testing principle. The next is the exhaustive testing is impossible. In this testing, uh, everything that is all combination of inputs and uh, preconditions is not uh, feasible except for uh, trial cases. Rather than attempting to test and exhaustively risk analysis uh, test techniques and uh, prioritize should be used to focus te uh, test efforts. Uh, uh, then uh, next is the early testing. Uh, early testing saves time and money. Uh, to find defects early, both starting and dynamic test activities should be started as early as possible in the software development life cycle. This is SDLC. And testing early in the software development life cycle helps to reduce the uh, aim net costly changes. So then next is the uh, defect clustering. So defect cluster together. A small number of modules usually contains most of the defects discovered during pre-release testing or is uh, responsible uh, for most of the operational failure. So predicted defects cluster and the actual observed defect cluster uh, in rest or operation are an uh, important input into a risk analysis used to focus the test effort. Uh, then next is the pesticide paradox. So be aware of the pesticide paradox. If the same tests are repeated over and over again, so ev eventually this test no longer find any new defect. So um, to, de uh, to detect new defects, uh, then existing text and uh, test data may need changing and new tests may need to be written. Uh, so tests are no longer effective and fi uh, at finding defects just as uh, pesticides are no longer effective at killing uh, inspect after a while. Uh, then in, in some cases, uh, such as uh, automated regression testing, uh, the pesticide paradox has a uh, beneficial outcome, which is a relatively low number of regression defects. So next is the testing is context dependent. This is the sixth, uh, sixth one is the uh, testing is the context dependent. Uh, then in this, uh, in this principle, testing is done differently in different uh, contexts. For example, uh, safety critical in the industrial control software is tested differently from uh, uh, e-commerce uh, than mobile app. As another example, testing is an agile project is done differently than testing in sequential life cycle project. And uh, last one is the absence of error fallacy. Uh, in this uh, testing principle, some organizations expect that tester uh, can control all possible uh, tests and find all possible defects. But principle um, 1 and 2, that is testing shows the uh, presence of defects and exhaustive testing is impossible, respectively. 
tell us that this is a uh, impossible. Further, it is a fallacy to expect that just finding and and uh, fixing a large number of defects will ensure the success of system. So, for example, throughout uh, truly uh, testing all specified requirements and findings, all defects found could still produce a bug in um uh, in system. So these are the uh, testing principles. The next is the testing and debugging. So testing, first of all, testing, it involves identifying bugs, error, defects, fault in a software without correcting it. Normally, professionals with a quality assurance background are involved in bug identification. So testing is performed in the testing phase. Then uh, next is the debugging. It involves identifying, isolating, and fixing the bugs in program uh, itself. Developers who write the code, the software conduct debugging upon incorrect counting uh, uh, an error uh, in the code. Then debugging is a part of white box testing or unit testing. Debugging can be performed in the development phase while conducting unit testing or in Mm, are in pages while fixing the uh, reported box. So most probably uh, testing is performed by a tester that is QA engineer and debugger. Uh, debugging is performed by developer also. So next is the difference between defect, bug, error and failure. This is the most important part uh, in software testing. So but first of all, what is meant by defect? Uh, the variation or a difference between the actual result and expected result is known as defect. Most probably uh, quality engineer, QA engineer refers the term defect. Then second is the bug. What it mean by bug? The when defect is genuine or real, and then uh, this bug is reproducible and accepted by test lead or tester or developer. Then it is a uh, called. Then it is called as bug. Uh, this will uh, mainly refer as a QA engineer and developer. Then next is the error. Uh, when mistake occur in a program that will not allow to compile and run the code, it is called an error. So most probably developer refers the term error at the time of development. Then next is the failure. When fault is uh, detected by end user uh, while using the application, in real environment called as failure. So most probably client or uh, end user uh, refers the term failure. These are these uh, testing principle as well as difference between test uh, testing or debugging. Uh, so thank you all of you.